بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل فجعلهم كعصف مأكول السلام عليكم سرافيل is about a bad king named Abraha that lived a long, long time ago when Prophet Muhammad was just born, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He tried to destroy the Holy Kaaba. He wanted to destroy the Kaaba because he didn't like how so many people came to visit the Kaaba to pray to Allah. He wanted people to come worship at his huge church that he built in Yemen instead. So he made a plan to take his big elephants and go and knock down the Kaaba. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made his plan go bad. Allah sent birds from the sky to drop baked clay or hot stones on them. Allah destroyed them before they could destroy the Kaaba. Wow! Allah is powerful. The end. The story of the elephant is regarded as an actual historical event that took place in the same year that Prophet Muhammad was born. In light of this claim, and the claim that the Qur'an doesn't contradict science, one cannot avoid asking a few questions. What sort of birds carried these stones? One hardly has to point out that birds' legs are not built for throwing objects at high velocity, nor do they have the dexterity to manipulate and accurately aim stones even if they were on the ground, let alone while in flight. It would also be difficult for birds to carry stones large enough to kill someone, not to mention the problem of the weight ratio and being able to fly at the same time. Another question is how could they have managed to kill a whole army? Or had enough stones to complete the job? Did they fly back to a secret location to be reloaded by a ground crew of hamsters? There are so many questions about this strange incident, not least of which is why did God go to such bizarre lengths when he can just say be and it is? And why kill what was a Christian king and his army to save the Kaaba, which was a place of shirk at the time? And why didn't God save the Kaaba when it was attacked and rebuilt more than once after Muhammad? But most of all, why does God only perform such theatrical displays of his power in a distant time amongst ignorant and superstitious people, but then decides to suddenly stop doing all that once man has advanced enough to record and properly verify such wondrous acts. It makes you think. <laughs>